old ruins of St Mary's Kirkyard at St Mary's Loch in the Scottish Borders. A beautiful and serene, tranquil place. But this Kirkyard is supposedly the resting place of two star-crossed lovers from an early chapter in the Scottish Borders, Lady Margaret Douglas and her lover, Lord William. But how did they come to be interred in this place and what is their story? In the early 1800s, Sir Walter Scott would trek these areas, these remote mountainous areas of the Scottish borders, searching for the history and the stories of this land. And he was the first person to document these stories and they were known mainly as the border ballads. These kind of long poems that documented the heroes and the events and the romance of the early 1500s, 1600s in the Scottish borders. Now every one of these border ballads usually has a kind of greyness around the geography. Where exactly did they take place? But there is one, one border ballad which supposedly has an exact geographical location. And it's right here, and it's right along the road there, at Black House Tower. And that border ballad was known as the Douglas Tragedy. unknown, but probably talking about late 1400s, 1500s at Black House Tower, which is just a couple of miles along the lock there. It was a stronghold of the Douglas family, the ever powerful Douglas family of the Scottish borders. And in that family, at that time, there was a father, seven sons and a daughter Margaret. But Margaret eloped with this guy, Lord William, whoever he was, and the family didn't take too kindly to that. So one, one afternoon, Douglas, the father and his seven sons, lay in wait for Margaret and her new lover, because they were going and they were determined to stop this relationship. So they stopped the couple with a view, probably, to killing Lord William. But things took a turn, and one by one, Lord William fought each member of the Douglas family, and lo and behold, he killed all eight of them. Lord William himself was mortally wounded and died after the fight. And it's said that Lady Margaret and Lord William were laid to rest in this churchyard here at St Mary's. But the seven brothers and their father were buried in the forest near Black House Farm. The Douglas Tragedy, it's a well-known tale and it's a, a poem that's been recited and sang over and over again and it's probably quite well, well known specifically to members of the Douglas family whether in Scotland still or, or elsewhere in the world, America, Canada, Australia, wherever you are. But the tales are familiar and the poem's familiar but the actual sites on the ground are not quite so familiar. The tower itself apparently still stands but more interestingly than that, where the seven Douglas brothers and their father were buried and killed was supposedly set a circle or even a square of eight standing stones to mark the event. Now these stones 
have apparently been ploughed and forested out of existence. And there was an actual archaeological investigation there down, down there in 1957, and they proclaimed the stones as lost. But I think otherwise, I think the stones are still standing somewhere deep in the forest, in the valley, in the hills around Black House Tower. So that's what I want to do today, is go and find Black House Tower and then hopefully find this ancient and sacred Douglas grave. You know, this Douglas tragedy really is a great story, even on its own merits. But there's more gravitas and weight to this story in this area when you look at the history of this kirkyard and Black House Tower where we're just heading. Because this kirkyard here was supposedly the Kirk of the Forest, as noted by Blind Harry, the place where William Wallace himself was proclaimed the Guardian of Scotland. And the area holds even more significance to the members of the Douglas family because Black House Tower was gifted, as many places were in the south of Scotland, to the one and only the good Sir James, the Black Douglas, after the Scottish Wars of Independence. But it's thought that James himself, the Black Douglas, used Black House Tower as a hideout and a fort <laughs> during the Wars of Independence. And it makes sense, if Wallace was down here fighting and hiding, why would James Douglas not follow in his footsteps and use this beautiful but remote and hidden location to hide from the English forces? Looks like I've got company here. Hey guys. So let's go once again in the footsteps of the Black Douglas to Black House Tower and the Douglas Graves. Yeah, the first tower that you come to here on your walk between St Mary's Kirk and Black House Tower is this Dry Hope Tower. This tower was owned by the other powerful border family of the Scots. But it's just an indication of how turbulent this now very peaceful and tranquil area once was. It was a place where a man needed a castle. Now you can actually access that tower and get in and have a look, climb up the stairs onto the roof, but I really don't have time to do that today. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'm scared of all those cows that are sitting around the door guarding it, taking shade. Nothing to do with that at all. The first clue to the history of this place comes in the name of this burn. Because this little burn here is known as the Douglas Burn. Not to be confused with the Douglas Burn in Lanarkshire, but this one also has a deep-rooted connection with the Douglas family. Yeah, reaching this Douglas Tower is not proving easy today. There's so much livestock around here and so many young ones and so many people working on 
Okay, I think I can see the, the tower poking its head out of the vegetation there. And according to my old maps, the location of the stone circle of the stones is somewhere up that valley. That's going to be tough to find. Plus the fact there's a, another massive herd of ginger cows up there. Bloodthirsty, man-eating, ferocious ginger cows. Yeah, this feels a bit creepy. The, the buildings are most certainly deserted and you've got that ancient tower just right behind them and the trees there. Let's get in and have a look. Ah, yes. I love it. I love it when they're like this. Overgrown, forgotten, deserted. Just gives them that air of proper history. Yeah, so here it is, Black House Tower. Once a stronghold of the great Black Douglas and now, complete ruin. I ain't gonna get anywhere near it today. It's like shoulder high and nettles and raspberries and other thistles and other jaggy Scottish vegetation. So I ain't gonna get anywhere near it today. But it's quite amazing that, isn't it? Wow. Try and get in this tower. It's got this wonderful big ash tree garden in it. Yeah, that's a big ash tree. This is all nails. Ow, ow. Big elder tree there as well. Wow. Many people ever coming in here. It's got this spi like spiral staircase at this end. A block tower down that way. A little gun slat there. Marvellous. Amazing old tower. They don't want you in though. Surrounded by barbed wire. Ow, ow, ow. Nettles which are attacking me. Yeah, my legs are now throbbing. It feels like I've just dipped them in acid, which is pretty much what I've done by going out those nettles, I suppose. Yeah, this is not... This is not proving easy at all. Every time I see a little clearing or some fallen trees in the forest, I'm going in and having a look, but there's... You know, it's a vast, literally a vast forest. And there are a lot of natural stones, so it's difficult to find a standing stone circle. Possibly be 
the remnants of maybe an eight stone circle here obliterated now by this monstrosity of a modern forestry commission road I think this is the closest you're going to get to be honest fitting that we've got this little thistle growing right next to this one here this could have been the father wow a sacred site forgotten vandalized even But it's not a total failure, we found the Douglas Burn and Douglas's magnificent ruins of Black House Tower called Black House because of the swarthy dark complexion of the Black Douglases Fantastic old hidden ruin Yeah, I really don't think I'm going to find these Douglas stones just a really great example how, how an important site for Scottish history, Scottish border history and Douglas history has been systematically ploughed out of existence, probably robbed out of existence and then more uh, recently forested out of existence. Uh, nothing is sacred, these sites are just uh, pains in the neck to the industrialists and commercialists of this this modern world I'm afraid